This coming month in the Enlightenment event, we're moving into psychological enlightenment. So this means we're going to be looking at thoughts and thinking and understanding and shifting our relationship with them. Because most of us have been identified with our thinking mind far too much. We've been trained into it because if you think about it at school, how often were you invited to tune into your body to receive wisdom? How often were you invited to get quiet and and ask for the information or for the, the right next move for you that came direct from source? Versus how often were you directed to books, to teachers, to other experts who were the ones with the answer, who were the ones with information for you to learn and to then think about. We were so trained in to thinking. We were so validated for thinking and for thinking well, for having sensible thoughts, for having great ideas. And it was all, all focused on this, what feel, feels like our thoughts are here. It's all focused on the head, on the conceptual, on the, yeah, on the thinking, on the thoughts. It was all lauded. It was all raised up on a pedestal as the most important thing to pay attention to. And equally, the thing that we were judged for, what were you thinking? What on earth were you thinking to go ahead and do that, whatever that was? So we found ourselves from a very young age in this precarious position of, oh, there's good thinking that I get praised for in school and there's this bad thinking that I get told off for. Oh, right. How do I, how do I do the right thinking? How do I get into the right kind of thinking? And so from really, really early on, we were lost in the mind, having that as primary, having that as the most important aspect of our experience, believing that if I could just know enough, if I could just learn enough, if I could just regurgitate enough and do that well enough, then my life will be sorted. And if I can just get rid of all these other thoughts that are apparently bad and wrong and that are getting me in trouble, then I'll be okay. And so that's continued through our lives. And we've collected and collected and collected the kind of thinking that we think is right. And we've rejected and resisted the kind of thinking that we believe is wrong. Creating ourselves this complete tangle of confusion with the mind like this filing cabinet stuffed absolutely full of known ideas and so that each time something comes up we're rifling through the the drawers of the filing cabinet trying to find the right thing to say the right thing to think right now so that therefore I say the right thing and do the right thing so that I keep being told I'm good and I'm acceptable and I'm okay and it just gets untenable that's usually what brings people, first of all, into a spiritual exploration. Because if we've tried any personal development stuff, where we've tried to override or overwrite even the bad thinking with good thinking, if we've tried any kind of positive thinking, positive psychology, overcoming of thoughts that we think are wrong, oh my goodness, how we find that that's just untenable and unsustainable and unsatisfying and unfulfilling and exhausting. And certainly for me, I saw how my efforts to do that did not work. It was like in this section of life over here with work, I was able to manage and control the thinking. So I did all the right things and said all the right things. But then over here at home, blah, all the stuff that had been suppressed and held back from my experience in the work environment came flooding out at home with my kids being frustrated with my kids primarily being irritated being judgmental all the stuff that I kept hidden in the workplace in favor of all the positive thoughts all the enlightened thoughts all the um 
equanimous, emotionally intelligent thoughts. And so, yeah, so this is what often brings people to a spiritual exploration because something in them says, this is not how it's meant to be. This is not the truth of who we are. We are freedom. We are inclusion of all, which means inclusion of all thoughts. We are peaceful by nature. We're not this one that reacts against some thoughts and resists them and then tries to draw in other thoughts because they're good thoughts, the absolute antithesis of peace. And so how brilliant that we get brought into this exploration. How brilliant that the system guides us and says, there is more to you than this. There is more to you than trying to manage and navigate and sort this filing cabinet of known information out. So when we come into that exploration and we find that, oh, there is something deeper. When I stop referring to this known filing cabinet of information, when I detach from that, wow, these beautiful, perfect for the moment, in flow thoughts come through, which have such a different feeling. In those early days, it's like chalk and cheese. The contrast of these known thoughts and these beautiful, fresh from upstream, wise, intelligent, as I said, perfect for you, perfect for this moment thoughts that arrive as though by magic. And then as we start to navigate by that, then we begin to sometimes lose sight of that distinction. It starts to become a bit muddier the um the known thoughts start to mimic those beautiful wise thoughts that come from upstream and so it starts to get a little bit harder to differentiate and and see well which one is which one's coming from that filing cabinet mind and which one's coming from fresh from upstream and that's cool because then that leads us to to test in the world to test our our emotional reaction because if there's a the feeling in us then becomes the navigation I can feel in my system if there's a resistance if there's a reaction if there's a um, a clinging to an idea that's creating discombobulation in me or it's creating that discombobulation in the world it's creating struggle in me or it's creating struggle in the world in some way and so we start to be able to use the world and our own inner, inner feeling system as that navigation point. And all the way along that, we are always asking, is it true? It's really what we're always asking when it comes to thought. Is it true? Is it really how I think, how I think it is? Are they really how I think they are? Am I really how I think I am? So in March, in the Psychological Enlightenment Month, we've got Grace Bell bringing the work of Byron Katie, which is an incredible tool for questioning, is it true? Is this really how it is, how they are, or how I am? It, it bursts the myths out of the water of how we think, how we think things are, what we think we know, even what we think we know for definite, absolute sure, they're often the best ones to bring to this kind of inquiry. And we also have Amy Johnson coming to talk about what thought even is. So really going to the depths of what's true about thought because when we start to question that and start to ask questions like, well, what even is a thought? This thing, this experience of thinking that I've been told is so important and that I was taught in school to navigate my life by. And we've just blindly followed that, followed that, followed that because we're in a society where that's what we're taught to then actually question, well, what even is this? 
what even is this that I'm following and what's true about the actual experience of a thought? And if we're to consider true as the as something which is permanent, something which is reliable, something which is unchanging, what do we find when we actually question what's true about a thought? And the weird thing is, the more we do this, I say weird, it's actually very logical, but it seems weird when we start, it seems weird. The weird thing is that as we question all of this, and this known mind can get a bit scared by it because it thinks that this known is what's essential, but when we question and we question and we question and what's not true falls away because there's nothing else that can happen with it, then what's left is back to that beautiful, fresh flow of perfect for you for this moment thoughts which appear from upstream. So it's not that we end up like a gibbering wreck in the corner that's incapable of functioning in the world. Absolutely the opposite. Because now we're not referring to the filing cabinet anymore. We're not wasting our time and energy on what was known for that previous time on that previous occasion, 10, 20, 5, 3, 2 years ago. We're not referring back to the known information that was right for that moment back then. We're now navigating off this moment here now with these thoughts which are fresh and perfect for this moment now. And that is the flow, that is the ease, that is the movement of life as life through life, which everybody loves the feeling of. Show me anybody who doesn't love the experience of flow. I would genuinely like love to meet somebody who has had an experience of flow and who goes, oh, that was awful. Oh, oh no, I don't like that. <laughs> Literally, everybody loves the feeling of flow. Everybody loves the receiving of these beautiful, fresh thoughts just for us, just for this moment. It's a beautiful feeling because it's the feeling of us in alignment with ourself. It's the feeling of us revealed from behind the filing cabinet of previously known information that was perfect for that moment, but which isn't for now. So if this all sounds like a conversation you want to be in, if you can feel that difference in your experience, if you can feel that next level of freedom that's available for you, of flow that's available for you, instead of having to continue the clunky navigation through this big, bursting, full filing cabinet of information, then this month is going to be so amazing for you. And as well as that, you get me at the beginning of the month doing a setup call, a context call, a uh, let's get really clear about what we're doing here this month, which will then flow into Amy's session in week two, into Grace's session in week three, and then we'll close with a Q&A session where everything is open for your discussion, for your experiences, for your questions, and all surrounded in a community space that means we get to stay in connection during the process of the month. So you get to continue engaging with me and Amy and Grace, get continue to get, to, you get to keep continue <laughs> You get to continue engaging with all your fellow community members. And you get to receive from each other beautiful examples and insights and realizations. Usually there are quotes and articles that come up along the way that are really valuable to drop in to share with everybody. So it's a really rich experience, a very connected experience and an enlightening experience, so that no matter where you are on your journey, there'll be something for you to see fresh. There'll be another layer of confusion eroded from your system to reveal more of your unique expression. That's the feeling of the flow, of you being you as you are, unencumbered, unhindered, disentangled, from that filing cabinet mind 
that quite frankly has weighed us down and keeps us limited, keeps us less than where we really are. So if this sounds interesting to you, I would love to see you there, I'd love for you to join us. The link is in the description here or in the comments or in the bio, wherever you're watching this video. And I would love to, I would love to meet you. The doors are opening on the 1st of March and they'll be open just until the 5th. So if you want the opportunity to come in and join us for this Psychological Enlightenment Month, you have them from the 1st until the 5th of March to get in the door and come and join us in there and have an amazing month of lightening your psychological experience so that you feel more flow, more ease, so that you reveal more of your unique expression which is what we all want. Much love. I look forward to seeing you there.